Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to show you how to stamp and color a bunch of flowers inside a mason jar. I bought this sweet little stamp set from Reverse Confetti that has cotton and thistles in the flowers and then this jar because I've been obsessed with coloring glass lately. Some of you may have seen that on my Instagram. In order to get the placement right, I stacked the stamps up in the Misty just so I could make sure I had enough room. Don't ask me why I had to do that. I might have stamped one earlier with the jar too high, ran out of space for my flowers. Stamping in Lawn Fawn's Jet Black and then laid my flowers in there so now I know where they're gonna line up. I'm cutting a little mask, a little bitty mask, because I wanna mask out just that jar, but I didn't feel like stamping it, cutting out an official mask. So I just made a little narrow piece for the neck and then one across the bottom and uh, checking the whole thing to make sure that nothing's going to stamp outside of that. And I'm stamping my flowers above the vase. And so what I found was that things stuck to uh, the stamp since the stamp was dry on that bottom side. So I just stuck my scissors in there to hold it in place. My, my magnets were not strong enough at that point, or at least the places where they were at. And now to do the bottom part. This is where kind of a little fancy stamping is gonna be helpful. So I have my second post-it note there and I'm pressing down so I get most of the ink off and I'm doing second generation stamping inside the jar. That's gonna allow me to control how much color I put in there and not have big old black lines in there so I can make it look a little more realistic. So I'm using my set of 12 ink tense pencils. I used these actually, this is the set of pencils, uh, ink tense pencils at least, that I used in the book that I wrote. So if you have not heard about that, then go to BibleJournalingMadeSimple.com and see more about that. But anyway, just gonna use a simple set of pencils. You don't have to have all of the pencils all of the time for all of the mediums. So I am going to be using this blue color to make some of the water and I'm trying to create some negative spaces. I have a little negative space around the, the greens, around the stems on that left side. And then the other portions, I'm just going to try to create some vertical kind of stripe sections, a little bit across the bottom to make it look like there's an, an anchor in the bottom of the glass, and then throw in a few other blue spots. And I'm going to take my brush, this is a number eight silver brush, and wipe off the excess moisture because you don't want to have very much if you're stamping on what I'm stamping on, which is Nina. This is on Nina. This is not on watercolor paper. And Nina is the, the Copic paper that I use all the time. That's what this is. This paper is cheaper than watercolor paper. So if you're only going to be doing a limited image like this, and you're not trying to make it look like watercolor, that's not my attempt here. And with Inktense pencils, you can do all kinds of crazy things and make them look watercolory. I just wanted to blend them. I didn't really care about putting a lot of watercolor look on things. So I thought I'd try it on the Nina and I was surprised that it worked. But your brush can't be soaky wet because this paper does not take water very well. So my brush is just damp. And I, I rinse it every once in a while, but I wipe it back off on that paper towel like I did there at the beginning. But I can get some really nice blending going on here by just adding a little tiny bit of water with my brush. Now with the thistles, I wanted them to be kind of a purplish color, but I didn't have a purple pencil in this little set of 12. So I just added some pink to the blue that I put on there and then just used the brush to move some color around and it intensifies the color as well as blends it, which is kind of nice. And I used a couple different greens in the, the leaves and stuff and the stems on the cotton. I have no idea. I should, probably should have looked it up, what color of green that these stems might be in reality. Because there's a couple different greens in this set, which is kind of funny to have a set of 12 pencils and you have several greens in there. But whatevers, these manufacturers make whatever decisions they, they do and then blending using just that slight bit of water again. Just a damp brush, not super soaky wet, but I'm mixing two greens so I get a, a more interesting green than just that solid one green color. So now I can go through and add a few stems in here and not 
kind of outlining every one or trying to do anything other than a suggestion of the greens inside the glass. Just a little idea of it in there is all that's needed. You don't have to kind of color around every single stem. For the cotton, I wanted to make it look like it was a little warmer colored than everything else that I had here because otherwise I might have done a blue color for the shadows. So I went with a brown instead and that worked quite nicely. And I liked it enough, I wanted it somewhere else in the piece. So I'm making a, just a halo, a very soft halo around the outside edges of the jar. And that's gonna make the jar pop and look whiter. So you can already see that those white highlights on it are looking even whiter. And then I went around the cotton, cotton balls and stuff up there, the cotton flowers, and did a little bit with the blue up there. So I'm kind of reflecting the, the cooler color in the top area and it just gives the whole thing a much softer look overall but on the back you can see there is a little bit of warping just a tiny bit but only in a few spots so I didn't use very much water and it was quite successful the happy everything sentiment is stamped onto some vellum that I taped onto the back it's always hard to figure out how to attach your vellum but I just made a strip out of it and taped it on the back and worked really well did a little die cut around the outside edge of my panel to make it all pretty and stitched and she's done. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you learned a little something, a little tip to try with your Inktense pencils on some Nina cardstock. And I will see you again next time. Have a really awesome day. Go make something beautiful.